the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. for sin. Look graciously on this confession of our lowliness, that we who are bowed down by our conscience may always be lifted up by your mercy. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. From the book of Exodus, Moses was tending the flock of his father-in-law Jethro, the priest of Midian. Leading the flock across the desert, he came to Arab, the mountain of God. There an angel of the Lord appeared to Moses in fire, flaming out of a bush. There an angel of the Lord, as he looked out, <coughs> he was surprised to see that the bush though on fire, was not consumed. So Moses decided, I must go over to look at this remarkable sight and see why the bush is not burnt. When the Lord saw him coming over to look at it more closely, God called out to him from the bush, Moses, Moses. He answered, Here I am. God said, Come no further. Remove the sandals from your feet. For the place where you stand is holy ground. I am the God of your fathers, he continued, the God of Abraham, the God of Israel, the God of Jacob. Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look at God. But the Lord said, I have witnessed the affliction of my people in Egypt and have heard their cry of complaint against the slave drivers. So I know well what they are suffering. Therefore, I have come down to rescue them from the hands of the Egyptians and lead them out of the land into a good and spacious land, a land flowing with milk and honey. Moses said to God, but when I go to the Israelites and say to them, the God of our fathers has sent me to you. If they ask me, what is the name, what am I to tell them? God replied, I am who I am. Then he added, this is what you shall tell the Israelites. I am sent me to on you. God spoke further to Moses. Thus shall you say to the Israelites, 
the Lord, the God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob, has sent me to you. This is my name forever. Thus am I to be remembered through all generations. The word of the Lord. The Responsorial Psalm. The Lord is kind and merciful. The Lord is kind and merciful. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all my being. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. The Lord is kind and merciful. He pardons all our inequities. He heals all your littleness. He redeems you, your life from destruction. He crowns you with kindness and compassion. The Lord is kind and merciful. The Lord secures justice and the rights of all oppressed. He has made known his ways to Moses and his deeds to the children of Israel. The Lord is kind and merciful. Merciful and gracious is the Lord, slow to anger and abounding in kindness. For as the heavens are high above the earth, so surprising is his kindness towards those who fear him. The Lord is kind and merciful. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. I do not want you to be unaware, brothers and sisters, that our ancestors were all under the cloud and all passed through the sea, and all of them were baptized into Moses in the cloud and in the sea. All ate the same spiritual food, and all drank the same spiritual drink, for they drank from a spiritual rock that followed them and the rock was the Christ. Yet God was not pleased with most of them, for they were struck down in the desert. These things happened as examples for us, that we might not desire evil things as they did. Do not grumble as some of them did, and suffer death by the destroyer. These things happened to them as an example, and they have been written down as a warning to us, upon whom the end of the ages has come. Therefore, whoever thinks he is standing secure should take care not to fall. The word of the Lord. Be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Some people told Jesus about the Galileans, whose blood Pilate had mingled with the blood of their sacrifices. Jesus said to them in reply, Do you think that because these Galileans suffered in this way, they were greater sinners than all other Galileans? By no means. But I tell you, if you do not repent, you will all perish as they did. Or those 18 people who were killed when the tower at Siloam fell on them, do you think that they were more guilty than everyone else who lived in Jerusalem? By no means. But I tell you, if you do not repent, you will all perish as they did. And he told them this parable. There once was a person who had a fig tree planted in his orchard. And when he came in search of fruit on it, but found none, he said to the gardener, For three years now I have come in search of fruit on this fig tree, but have found none. So cut it down. Why should it exhaust the soil? 
He said to him in reply, Sir, leave it for this year also, and I shall cultivate the ground around it and fertilize it. It may bear fruit in the future. If not, you can cut it down. The Gospel of the Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Gospel reading proclaimed today, on the third Sunday of Lent, recounts two events that happened during our Lord's life on earth. Two events that really happened, historical events. The first event was a violent political uprising of some Galileans, which the procurator Pontius Pilate repressed through sheer force, through violence. The second event was the collapse of the Tower of Siloam, the Tower of Jerusalem. Siloam is a neighborhood in the city, and that event caused 18 people to die. So we have in front of us two very sad and terrible events. One event caused by human beings, the other event accidental. In the ancient world, many people believed that bad things happened to people because of some serious sin that these people committed. So according to that logic, if you were one of the 18 people who died when the tower fell on you, then you must have committed a serious sin that God was punishing. The Lord, however, operates according to a different logic. He says, those 18 people who were killed when the tower at Siloam fell on them, do you think that they were more guilty than everyone else who lived in Jerusalem? By no means. To look at a more contemporary example in our own day, it would be like believing that the 2,996 people killed during the 9-11 terrorist attacks all suffered and died because of some grave sin in their lives and that God was punishing them. But following our Lord's logic, we can confidently say that these 2,996 people were not more guilty than everyone else who lived in New York City or in the United States. But then the Lord adds something at the end, a solemn warning. But I tell you, if you do not repent, you will all perish as they did. In other words, he wants us to think about eternal death. These tragedies, this violence should remind us that eternal death exists as a real possibility for all of us. Hell, eternal damnation, that's the reality. And this is Jesus' main point here, conversion, repentance, as an urgent necessity, here, now, not putting it off. So when we are confronted by tragic events and violence, our first response should be to turn to God, begging for our own conversion, my conversion, your conversion, the conversion of others. When we see the tragedy unfolding in Ukraine on the news, we should see in this a real call to conversion, a call to repentance, mine and also yours, personally, immediately. I think of the utter seriousness of the words of Our Lady of Fatima to the shepherd children. She is believed to have said to them, men must amend their lives and ask pardon for their sins. They must no longer offend our Lord, who is already so much offended. In August of 1917, Our Lady is said to have also told the children, pray much and make sacrifices for sinners. For many souls go to hell because there is no one to make sacrifices for them. So, my brothers and sisters, doing penance and amending our lives by the grace of God, that is our focus not only during Lent, but throughout the year, every day of our lives, Repentance is to be the focus. That's what we are to be doing all the time, repentance. Many people, when they hear the word penance, get overwhelmed or intimidated because they think that this 
involves severe, rigorous fasting, rigorous prayer beyond their capacity. But the sacrifice that God demands of all of us is the faithful fulfillment of our duties in life, the observance of God's law and the commandments, and deeds of mercy that are to arise out of our love for God. The children of Fatima practiced very small penances, and they offered very little acts of mortification, but all of them were full of love. Little sacrifices like putting away our smartphones for a time, not listening to the radio in the car, giving someone in need a ride to reach their destination, not using Netflix during Lent. All of these little sacrifices, when offered with love, please God and draw down upon us and others a multitude of graces and blessings. It is as Pope Benedict XVI once said, Christ invites us to respond to evil, first of all, with a serious examination of conscience and the commitment to purify our lives. Otherwise, he says, we will perish. We will all perish in the same way. Conversion overcomes the root of evil, which is sin, even if it cannot always avoid its consequences. So what is our response to evil? Our response to evil is always conversion, repentance. Yesterday we celebrated the solemnity of Saint Joseph, spouse of the Blessed Virgin and guardian of the Incarnate Word. Saint Joseph is a model of conversion for all of us. And I encourage all of you here to consecrate yourselves to Saint Joseph. His life was not free from suffering or trial or temptation. It was full of it. In his life, Joseph encountered one crisis after another. His life was also full of sacrifices, which he offered to God with love and with great faith. St. Joseph oriented himself away from selfishness and towards self-giving, and that is exactly what it means to repent, away from selfishness towards self-giving. And herein lies his greatness and humility. St. Jo Joseph knew that he was not the center of existence. He was not the end all and be all. His life was not about him. He got it. God was his number one priority in life. Everything else in his life revolved around God and pleasing God. And of course, all of that would be impossible without silence and prayer. Silence and prayer, which all of us need so much. May St. Joseph help us to rediscover the greatness and strength of conversion. May he help us to understand that doing penance and amending our lives is the way to better ourselves and the life of society as a whole. This is very much the same idea that our Jewish brothers and sisters have. In Hebrew, it is called tikkun olam, repairing the world. Jews believe that by performing ritual mitzvot, good deeds, following the commandments, following other religious obligations, it is all a means of tikkun olam, helping to repair the world, to fix the world. They believe that the performance of these will hasten the coming of the Messiah. Rabbi Jonathan Sachs speaks of a friend of his, a very devout and faithful Jew, who learns Talmud every day, who was traveling on business when he suddenly heard news of an earthquake in Haiti. Immediately he realized that as a Jew, he had to help. He had to do something. And somehow he managed to get himself to Haiti very early on. He went to the 10 city full of refugees in Port-au-Prince and discovered that there was no food shortage, but that there was no drinking water. He found out the nearest water purification plant was 15 miles away from the city. So he hired a tank and went and got 3,000 gallons of purified water, which he brought back to the city, giving water for 3,000 people. But very soon he realized the scale of the problem was much bigger than that, and he didn't know how to get all the resources to get help on a larger scale. So he got out his computer and started blogging for the first time in his life. 
So his description of what was happening on the ground and what was needed went out across the internet, across the web. And within days, he had 200 people each volunteering to donate money to generate more water supply. By the time this man left, four days later, he was providing water for 300,000 people. One man, one faithful Jew, providing water for 300,000 people. Rabbi Sachs goes on to say that this tells him about how a deeply religious Jew feels when he or she hears that people are suffering somewhere else in the world. The Jews have suffered so much that they can relate to other people's sufferings. And that is the kind of role model of Jewish values lived in action that this rabbi really admires. We too, my brothers and sisters, feel the sufferings of other people. We feel them deeply. We hear their pain. And we want to do something for them. We can relate to other people's suffering because each of us has suffered. The world needs role models of Catholic values lived in action. May the intercessions of St. Joseph obtain for all of us the grace to repair the world, to make each of us a role model of Catholic values lived in action. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who is conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he shall come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. We therefore approach God with confidence to express our needs. That all who have not yet tasted the living water of the gospel may found the fountain of life in the church and her sacraments. We pray to the Lord. Lord. That all who are preparing to be baptized at Easter may find strength and joy during their Lenten pilgrimage. We pray to the Lord. Lord. That all those who thirst for the waters of life, unborn children, the terminally ill, the poor and oppressed and suffering may receive the love, respect and care they deserve. We pray to the Lord. Lord, That those who have died with hope in Christ may be purified of sin and welcomed into eternal life. We pray to the Lord. Lord, And we pray for the repose of the soul of Gerald Dixon, for whom this Mass is being offered. We pray to the Lord. Lord, For all the souls in purgatory that the dew of God's mercy and consolation may rest upon them. We pray to the Lord. Eternal Father, you sent your only begotten Son into this world to seek and to save the lost. In your mercy, grant that he may ever seek us and save us. For without your grace, we are lost. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord.
brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Be pleased, O Lord, with these sacrificial offerings, and grant that we who beseech pardon for our own sins may take care to forgive our neighbor, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you have given your children a sacred time for the renewing and purifying of their hearts, that freed from disordered affections, they may so deal with the things of this passing world as to hold rather to the things that eternally endure. And so with all the angels and saints we praise you, as without end we acclaim. Thank you. 
the mystery of faith, we proclaim. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity, in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof. 
but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. As we receive the pledge of things yet hidden in heaven and are nourished while still on earth with the bread that comes from on high, we humbly entreat you, O Lord, that what is being brought about in us in mystery may come to true completion through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail, Holy Queen, Mother of Mercy, our life, our sweetness, and our hope. To thee do we cry, poor banished children of Eve. To thee do we send up our sighs, mourning and weeping in this alley of tears. Turn then, most gracious Advocate, thine eyes of mercy towards us. And after this, our exile, show unto us the blessed fruit of thy womb, Jesus. O clement, O loving, O sweet Virgin Mary, pray for us, O Holy Mother of God. Let us pray. O God, our refuge and our strength, look down in mercy upon thy people who cry to thee. And by the intercession of the glorious and immaculate Virgin Mary, Mother of God, of Saint Joseph, her spouse, of thy blessed apostles Peter and Paul, and of all thy saints. Do thou mercifully and graciously hear the prayers which we pour forth for the conversion of sinners, and for the liberty and exaltation of our Holy Mother, the Church, through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. Saint Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Most sacred heart of Jesus. Most sacred heart of Jesus. Most sacred heart of Jesus. 